In uh, 2024, Ukraine won its first ever Oscar the be for the best documentary. The winning film is titled 20 Days in Mariupol. It was shot inside the besieged city, port city, during the assault by Russian forces. It is directed by Miroslav Chernov, a Ukrainian uh, journalist. No, 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 no. Let me, let me do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we may proceed. Taken to the stage, Chernov said, I'm honored, but I will probably be the first director on this stage to say that I wish I had never made this film. Uh, I wish to be able to exchange this for Russia, never attacking Ukraine. This is the gist of what I'm going to talk about. Yes, what is a golden chance for some journalists to become international media stars. But, the, but this chance comes at a terrible cost. It is 1% of advantages. Uh, you know, right now I have control over the slides. Thank you. Let me, let me proceed with this. So this is just the one. Uh, the, the third slide is, is uh, uh, what, I, what I want to show uh, for, for now. Sorry, but just a minute. Just to ask right, that, please, right. nobody should move the slides. It appears students are moving the slides. I'm not moving the slides. So um, it okay. seems people are moving the slides. So please do not move the slides. Mm -hmm. Do not move the slides. I'm going to see okay. if I can disable that because I haven't been moving the slides. So nobody mm -hmm. should move the slides, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. What slide do you want to be on the first slide? No, 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 no. Just this one with red, uh, red uh, background. It's all right. Okay. We, Thank we, you. I, I'm happy now. Let me proceed. So, what is the gondol chance for some journalists to become international media stars? But this chance comes at a terrible cost. It is one percent of advantages for journalists and ninety-nine percent of losses, challenges, and threats. I spoke to several Ukrainian journalists while preparing for this lecture. One of them is Natalia Nagorna, who in August 2024 filmed the first video report for Ukrainian media from the Kursk region of Russia, a part of which was captured by the Ukrainian army. The other is Andriy Kulikov, the head of the Commission on Journalism Ethics, the authoritative NGO aimed at self-regulation of the journalist community of Ukraine. Some, some cover the frontline areas, others work in different regions of Ukraine, trying to report on the occupied territories as well. Still others work as TV anchors, dreading that their media popularity might endanger their relatives. Five of my interlocutors work for Suspilne, the national public broadcaster which is hoped to become something like the BBC or Deutsche Welle. Okay, uh, we're let, uh, Bina, you now, you now take control of the slides because I don't see them anymore. Uh, uh, so uh, now I want to see the I might I want to show the the slide with the with my, with the topic. The topic of my speech is journalist principles at risk in the Russo-Ukrainian war. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, let me first characterize step by step the actual conditions in which Ukrainian journalists find themselves since early 2022. Sleep deficit and physical exhaustion. Quote, because of explosion and air raids, we mostly sleep for not more than an hour and a half in a row. And even if there is no threat, we wake up because silence sounds too suspicious. It's not enough that you sometimes work 15 hours, sometimes 20. You sleep at work and continue working. Physically and mentally fatigued, journalists sometimes are not able to see their loved ones, their loves and children who might have gone to Europe. Quote, in the first equate, uh, in, in the worst case scenario, for example, occupation, which we hope will not happen, you as a media personality become a target for the enemy. And also your family who may happen to live close to the war zone. 
One more challenge is to get somehow distanced from the tragic stories journalists report. It is hard to cover people who have lost their loved ones or hope to find them. Not everyone is able to endure such pressure. All media outlets are said to be suffering from declining advertising revenues and a sort shortage of qualified staff, especially those at the frontline areas. Many journalists and cameramen join the army as volunteers or through mobilization. After 900 days of war, the local newsrooms in the east of Ukraine have been significantly emptied. Quote, we often have no more than 20% of the pre-war staff. Say, uh, some journalists leave the profession due to burnout, get tired of the news, inflated expectations about them, and go to the public sector with higher salaries and fewer risks and workloads. Safety issues. Quote, we gave up working in the office and switched into exclusively to remote work. A large number of reporters in one place is a potential target for a missile strike. Russians kill journalists on purpose. Therefore, each reporter has found a safe place, a hiding spot at home or nearby, where they have created all the conditions necessary for work. Two internet, internet lines, a generator or a charging station to survive the blackouts that may last up to 50 hours. The one who is geographically closer to the scene goes on an assignment. We are increasingly working as a one-man band. It's when one person is a reporter, cameraman, and a photographer at the same time. He or she shoots a video for social media, a report for television, or a live broadcast on a national channel or radio on a mobile phone. Recently, the Russians have begun to significantly use double strike tactics. It means that they would shell a certain spot and when emergency services, medics, rescuers, police and journalists would arrive there, the Russians would target the same place again. There are also there also can be mines or other explosive objects that you can step on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Technological challenges. Playing catch up. Telegram, uh, ironically a Russian app, is now a major news source in Ukraine. Verified media outlets are pressured to keep pace. The average time to publish a news piece is about 10 minutes, during which a web editor must ed verify the information according to journalistic standards, format, and publish it. AI generated video fakes. While fake images may usually be identified through reverse media uh, image search, forensic tools, or texture analysis, video fakes are far more sophisticated. One inf infamous example involved a fake video of a Bugatti dealer confirming that Elena Zelenska, the president's wife, had purchased a Bugatti in Paris. The video was convincing, but there were the subtle prompts. The man blinked only twice during a 90-second speech. And if you examine the video frame by frame, you could see the, the face mask shifting split slightly, a common glitch in deepfake technology. Social media limitations. Media outlets, especially those relying on crowdfunding, depend heavily on social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook. These platforms frequently block or remove posts related to the war due to their political nature or graphic content. Cybersecurity threats. Journalists are prime targets for cyber attacks. Cybersecurity goes beyond strong passwords and two-factor authentication. It includes using VPNs, backing up information on physical drives, not disclosing your current location. If a journalist wants to cover the front line, they should obtain an accreditation. Some journalists who were critical towards the situation in the armed forces and exposed corruption connected to the current government were denied it. A notable example was the Kherson operation when op journalists were banned from entering the city after it uh, was retaken by Ukrainian forces. Several journalists went there without approval, which led to a scandal and revocation of accreditations for major international outlets. Even if a journalist gets to the front line, military or press offices may be ready to tell the stories of their comrades and show the military equipment without actually letting journalists go with the soldiers on their combat missions. 
Some military officials try to oblige any journalist to show them the produced content before, content before publishing it. The martial law created even more, uh, even more limitations on showing the actual position, positioning of the, of the army personnel, ammunition and equipment. Manipulation of these rules might lead to unjustified censorship and criminal prosecution of journalists. The attempts of the Ukrainian government to control the media is another story. These include creating the, un, creating the United News TV Marathon, which features the TV channels loyal or neutral to the government and excludes oppositional channels affiliated with the previous president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko. The president office is rumored to recommend the channels included in the TV Marathon, which topics to tackle and which to avoid. A much bigger pressure is exerted on investigative journalists. It features wiretapping aimed at discrediting and character assassination, as well as blackmailing by the perspective of forced drafting into the army. Covering occupied areas. The Russians check people's phones to see if they have any contact with those in the uh, liberated territories or if they consume Ukrainian media. Only the occupation authorities have official informa information and they cannot be trusted. Communicating with locals in person, texting or talking on the phone with them might put those people in danger. Journalists are refused uh, interviews much more often than in peacetime. Sometimes people might react aggressively, especially in the areas close to the front where females and children fled and the remaining males abuse substances, alcohol in the first place. Quote, covering the war is not about money. It's a dirty, toxic and dangerous job for those who call themselves fanatics. These are people who feel socially responsible because there is a war in your country and you have to be involved. On the one hand, the work of a journalist during the, during the war is highly routinized. The number one topic remains the same. The situation at the front, daily reports, analysis by military experts. On the other hand, there is no so shortage of stories. Quote, we can do documentaries, participate in international festivals, conduct investigations that we could not dream of before. Working in Ukraine right now as a journalist is a challenge and a reward at the same time. Those remaining in the newsrooms motivate themselves to go on. Quote, we also document the war crimes of the Russians. Thanks to journalists, we learned many heroic stories of our military. What is happening today will be history tomorrow. And our task is uh, to document it. What seems ordinary today will be written down in books. Media workers have huge opportunities to gain crucial experiences and skills. This experience, which cannot be repeated, is a modern, huge technological war. Quote, we live in unbelievable times. There are the worst times to live in, but the best times for news correspondents. Uh, now we can discuss why journalist principles or standards can be and are at risk in the war in Ukraine. It happens because the journalist's mission is to tell the truth. That means to describe social reality in the objective, verifiable way. Quite often, this goal contradicts the responsibilities of a citizen, a male in particular. Popular understanding of these duties is to allow your country, which is a certain territory and people, to prioritize its interests above all else and to defend it at any cost. One more movie I mentioned today is titled Mr. Jones. It is about a Welsh journalist who dared to sneak into Soviet Ukraine during Stalin's rule a hundred years ago and to become the first to tell the West about massive hunger provoked and agonized by the state there. And what if your country is being attacked by a much stronger enemy? Then many might feel compelled to put objective informant of the public aside and engage in something else. The two main alternatives are patriotic rallying around the flag and be uh, sp spreading apocalyptic rumors about imminent catastrophe and defeat. 
neither are about journalism. But whoever, but however, both have powerful sponsors and promoters. The Ukrainian government is tempted to present themselves as messianic savers, accusing the real or imagined opposition of disloyalty. Mobilization is the key word here. Go and sacrifice yourself for the common cause. War is not the time to reelect the president and fight corruption. We, they say, at least now have much more important things at stake. Such a policy of everyday war could last for generations, as the cases of two Koreas or Israel-Palestine show. The aggressor country is very much interested in overcoming the resistance of Ukrainians prior or besides the regular war means. Russian military doct doctrine emphasizes that non-military methods like diplomacy, economic pressure, and disinformation play a much larger role in modern warfare than military action itself. War insights might look black and white, and the public can be interested in searching for the third independent view. It is crucial for the public to have access and be willing to get some in such information from respected journalists and not from bloggers and anonymous accounts that take no responsibility for their content while attracting a huge audience. In their turn, journalists recognize that truth saves lives, while patriotic flattering yourself makes you even more vulnerable. Since the start of the Russian invasion, Ukraine's journalist community decided that they should disclose things that might compromise Ukraine in the eyes of the world community. Quote, because we pinpoint them, we are already in the position to start mending them. The picture of the war we have to present to our audiences in the Ukraine and throughout the world must be as rounded as possible, even if this runs contrary to the desire to build, to build an attractive image of nationwide resolve and resilience. Many, uh, now I will try to, to find the, the right slide for now. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's some glitch. Okay. So we, we, uh, they, that is the, the slide we need. Many colleagues whom I spoke to uh, 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 tell me, however, that uh, during the war, the Western concept of journalist principles is not fully applicable. That's what they believe. They say that, that they must add to the list of these principles one more, which is do no harm. The following cases exemplify these real or perceived exceptions. Quote, you have to be very careful in the way you present the story and clearly calculate the consequences so that the enemy does not abuse the information. This, the war is not the time for sensations and loud headlines. Sometimes there is, inf there is information that could, should not be disclosed at this time. Say technical characteristics of a new drone that the Russians do not know much about, and it is better that they remain unaware of it as long as possible. Sometimes there is, more, there is some, inf some personal information that the military do not want to disclose. For example, a soldier doesn't want his face to appear on video as he has relatives in an occupied area. Quote, I wouldn't call it censorship, this, this journalist claims, in a negative way. There are, these are security measures that must be taken. To date, committing to journalist standards often poses threats to civilians and soldiers' lives. Quote, we cannot report immediately. For instance, when, a, when we uh, report about a soldier who was killed in action, we, not, we do not do it on the same day. His or her family might still be unaware of this loss. We cannot make a balanced story with two points of view. For example, both Russians and Ukrainians might claim that it wasn't them to shoot at a civilian object, but the opposing party. With military stories, such an approach simply does not work. Why then does this look so complicated? One of the reasons is the lack of tradition. Journalism in Ukraine is quite young. 
Ukrainians don't have much uh, examples to follow. Most of what was published in the Soviet Union for most of the 20th century wasn't journalism at all. You may have a look at Stalin's Photoshop in the book by David King titled The Commissar Vanishes: The Falsification of Photographs and Art in Stalin's Russia. The Soviet dictator would have annihilated a party comrade first and then would order to delete him from the official pictures. Now, when the Ukrainian media system is trying to internalize uh, the Western principles of journalism, leading Western media often provide precedents of violating these rules. Or at least it's how it's often perceived by many alumni of journalism schools in Ukraine. For instance, Western media might be openly lobbying for political candidates. What could be done? Answers are the same. Persistence in educating the public and holding those in power, power accountable is the key, and insisting on the media playing by the rules. Let me wrap up here with a bunch of links on the topic. Thanks, and let me ask you about your comments and questions. Maxim, thank you so much. I'm just a little bit perplexed about how presentation work and i honestly have no idea why it keeps switching um yeah. so thank you so it, much it, for, yeah. it, it you know it it uh, renews the picture <laughs> creating dynamics uh well as if we are missing dynamics uh, in this life yeah <laughs> so um well, first of all, thank you so much. Let's put some uh, emojis in the chat to thank Maxim. And uh, we have plenty of time to um, discuss what happens with uh, journalists at the moment. Maybe um, one thing you would like to tell us a little bit more is the marathon that uh, Ukrainian journalists are participating from day one of the Russian invasion. Um, if you could just, you know, tell us a bit more about what it is, why it was uh, sort of introduced, and so maybe you could trace the evolution of it, where it is now at what uh, stage, because uh, in many ways, I think it's a very peculiar and interesting phenomenon that very few of our uh, uh, students uh, really know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd love to share this. Uh, the uh, United News TV Marathon is a peculiar phenomena, uh, phenomenon for uh, Ukrainian media history and system in particular. Because uh, historically, during uh, since uh, the uh, Ukrainian independence, uh, media the media system in Ukraine is getting uh, is being more, uh, more or less, I'd say, decentralized uh, because of uh, mostly because of the uh, oligarchic system. Uh, which, uh, contrary to the Russian uh, case, wasn't uh, really pri privatized and controlled uh, by the ruling party, by the ruling uh, government. So normally we have, uh, I'd say, uh, oligarchic pluralism in the news. Uh, that is why, for example, uh, journalists normally uh, like if if we if I make very very short show the evolution here, if uh, during the 90s it was like huge and wild and brutal privatization, then uh, several uh, oligarchic groups uh, started of, uh, uh, mostly uh, launching uh, private TV channels which produced uh, quite uh, watchable entertainment, entertaining uh, content. Plus these, these oligarchy groups were, uh, were competing for power. 
And uh, because of that, they were re they had resources and ambitions to uh, to invest in the um, te televised content. Because of that, uh, historically, U Ukrainian uh, TV content uh, was be maybe became the first ever. Mm, mm, Maybe, maybe maybe not if if we just miss we drop uh, the music uh, the musical like popular music the, f the first the first thing uh, media product that was uh, for for Ukrainians that was able to actually compete with Russian um, uh, alternatives and uh, because of that really Ukrainians um, really watch their their uh, TV and considered it to be quite interesting, intriguing. So it's normal for Ukrainians really to, to get focused on, on their own uh, news agenda, especially uh, if we, we see this evolution of drifting away from Russia uh, and its um, like norms and its agenda during the, these historic, historic times of um, uh, Political political upheavals. I mean, Orange Revolution, later uh, Euromaidan, and now uh, full full scale war with Ukraine. Uh, very, uh, right now, we we may so uh, th this TV marathon w was um, like was um, was the idea. It was a uh, grass uh, uh, grassroots idea of. Uh, TV channels management. So it was like a step or or um, manifestation of uh, these uh, these TV, TV journalists like patriotic um, impression on what should be done in media ter in terms of media production uh, facing the full scale invasion. But very soon, just a matter in a matter of days, the government. <laughs> managed to somehow, you know, uh, uh, pri privatize this idea. So it uh, very soon uh, uh, the president, the president office, um, and the the like, the Bureau of Def Defense, so to say, uh, issued norms, decrees that regulated the uh, work of this uh, TV marathon, say uh, um, making it official, so to say. And maybe it was, it was really bad because for uh, during the first uh, first year of the war, the ratings of this TV marathon were really high. It it was really productive in the sense that it may, it mm, let uh, Ukraine present its view, its united common view on the war. That is why, really, it was uh, uh, it was accessible and available for millions of people to understand 24/7 what Kyiv thinks about what, what's going on. Uh, actually, the structure of the marathon is as follows: uh, it uh, the 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 news reels the news reel is formed by each uh, TV channel included. Which produces its own part. So now we see, now we're watching the part of the channel A. Then afterwards, we just were switching, we have been switched to the news reels of channel B and, and, the, um, and the like. Uh, but it, I, I believe uh, during, during 2023, Mm, the rating uh, uh, the ratings uh, begin to fall because of uh, the discrepancy, the growing distance between the, the harsh reality of war and the so to say victorious pictures, victorious agenda that was more and more being produced by this uh, channel. So it was it was becoming more about propaganda. Not necessarily black propaganda, but uh, more and more about wishes, about imagination 
of uh, Zelensky's government about how the things rather should be or should understood than what what the situation was really like because uh, you, you see that especially during during the uh, the uh, previous year uh, the anticipated uh, counteroffensive of Ukraine didn't what wasn't really wasn't really productive uh, Ukraine lost many territories mm, the condition of the army and the uh, population is getting really wary it's getting exhausted there is no rotation at the front and on top of that of course on top of that are the really telling investigations and cases of uh, omnipresent corruption which really enrages people really enrages so this is the most most scandalous topic, and of course it's not really present in the marathon. And it, that is why right, right now um, the the criticism is really growing. Uh, the the its ratings are really down. Many uh, uh, media analysts and uh, uh, media workers are raising raising uh, the, their voices uh, in terms of the the uh, marathon should be actually uh, like stopped, yeah, closed. Uh, I, the government responds to this criticism, insisting that the uh, the marathon is here to stay. Uh, of course, they, I, I, I totally understand it because they need it as a propagandist propaganda tool at least. So that is why, yeah, we have this um, situation of what I, what, I, what I again call the privatization of this good grassroots initiative by the, by, the, by the state. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you, Masu. So we have a question from Maisie in the oh. chat. Have Russian yeah. Ukrainian journalists approach to reporting changed since the war began? And if so, how? So I guess uh, you are well, well, well entitled to speak about Ukrainian journalists and I can uh, fill in the Russian spot if that's okay. Um, have Russian Ukrainian journalists approach the, the, to reporting changed since the war began if so, if so how hmm. to well stick to the ukrainian i guess stick to the ukrainian journal yeah, yeah 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 thank you thank you i i i will uh, it's it's really easier for me uh, i'm not i'm not in any sense uh, expert in russian reporting here um i'd say uh it is more uh, the 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 biggest difference between is between the very start of the war and this uh, latest uh, in the latest developments uh, the, uh, i'd say that um, maybe because of many factors it's, it's it will be too long to um, maybe because of many factors it's, it's it will be too long to to uh, capitalize on that uh, ukrainians were really enraged by the sheer fact of of the they they felt like they perceived it not as a as just threat but as, but as an insult from uh, from whom they really perceived as a brother of the nation you, you know that uh, ukraine was a political part of uh, the russian empire and uh, Soviet Union for centuries. Uh, is the majority of Ukrainians sometimes uh, speak Russian better than many uh, inhabitants of the Russian Federation. Um, that is why, and culturally, religiously, historically, mentally they consider themselves the undeniable part of this uh, common culture, common civilization. 
And this brutal assault uh, was again was considered by by the by the um, civil society of Ukraine is not as a threat per se because because it's rank and type in tile, uh, rank and type people were really frightened by the by the bombings by the um, uh, advancing army but the civil society was was considered is a like historical insight insult which should be uh, like which needs a response response because of that uh, there was a great patriotic surge a uh, great great uh, uh, omnipresent like emotional um, like uplifting ukrainians were maybe naively uh, hoped to that they would be able to uh, throw the russians away right now the situation looks very much different especially in terms of uh, um, for, for example like just the very recent developments and of course the results of of the u.s elections we we all know the at least what trump uh, said publicly that he has good relations with both uh, vladimir and volodymyr and he can end this he's gonna uh, if elected he's gonna end this uh, war very quickly very quickly of course we all know what what he can do is actually uh, announce the so to say obligatory negotiations and if say um, uh, zelensky would refrain from participating he might uh, announce that ah okay then just we we have this uh, unilateral agreement where the war is uh, is over now the us would uh, uh, does da, has no need no more need to send any weapons to ukraine you may, you may imagine what what catastrophic uh, consequences that that will entail so uh, that is why yeah uh, of course all these it really really influences the the reporting so instead instead of this sometimes naive and self flattering you know overconfident uh, approach toward the war so ah um, russians go to hell we are heroes we we you said this this uh, you know this favorite uh, famous placard yeah we can do it uh, right now right now uh, many many ukrainians are really uh, tired they 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 really felt sometimes felt lost um U ukrainians sometimes feel betrayed by the west in particular because they uh, many believe that the west didn't didn't uh, uh, didn't didn't uh, didn't do their be their best to support ukraine um yeah i has actually wanted to ask you a slightly probably more cheering question and probably this is going to be useful for uh our students too i don't know to what extent you guys are familiar with the show the servant of the people so Maybe. i'm going to put the link in the chat box to the youtube trailer of the famous show that um sluga naroda uh, the um the show that as some argued actually made Zelensky uh, into the president of Ukraine. Uh, if you haven't seen the show, and I'm th I think it still can be watched on Netflix, at least that's why I watched the first season of it, um, I strongly suggest you to, 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 to have a look. But because it's a, it's a great example of political strategy, wrapped into the entertaining show. But my question to you, Maxim, is about Zelensky and his approach to media. How would you, as a scholar and as a, as a practice, practicing journalist, would assess Zelensky in particular and his work with the media? Uh, I'd say I'd say uh, that um, 
from my point of view, we have two. Uh, I maybe maybe the key word here could be competition, because in a sense, uh, right now Zelensky, I believe that, that the, from many from many aspects, Zelensky could be characterized as a unique person in the position of uh, the president of Ukraine. For many, uh, in terms of, for example, international politics, in terms of his uh, media talents, he is the first to, to uh, Ukrainian president to ever to be able to speak English. Don't laugh, to, uh, don't laugh too loud, please. Uh, but it is true, he's the first, really the first, and uh, uh, still for, I believe, absolute majority of Ukrainian officials, uh, English is like, uh, you know, like Everest. It's, it's not a, it's, it's in, in no, in, it's no way just a, a day, like working English is a daily reality, uh, even, you know, for, for many uh, representatives of public figures in Ukraine. So uh, he's, he's really, in many, in many uh, aspects, He's really making a difference. He made a difference. Uh, right now, yeah, because in the course of this war, Ukrainians get used to see their country, their agenda, their cities, photos and uh, reports in the uh, in the Western media on a daily basis. It it was never like that. Never like that. Never ever. Uh, but I believe. It is what we, what was said so far is about Zelensky's own media personality. So if if being analyzed separately from what is going to be said, I believe he's not just good; he's unique, at least in the in the in the context of uh, in the context of Ukrainian politics and, and society and history. Because prior to him, we had much more bleak picture. Um, for example, I'd say Kuchma was the least media like friendly person. Bad looking on camera and, and the like. You know, he wasn't, a, I believe, a public figure uh, like a, for, a, for a televised politics at all. Uh, Zelensky is absolutely another story, but but where is where is actually the uh, the competition? The Zelensky's relations with the journalist community in Ukraine, especially Zelensky's government's uh, relations with with the uh, journalist uh, journalist community in Ukraine, is doesn't doesn't run smoothly. What is seen right now is, is believed by by uh, mm, journalists, many journalists, is that you, Zelensky is really jealous and is not ready for any serious criticism of his politics, of his policy. He is not flexible. He is not tolerant over, over journalists. Yes. Happily comparing again, for example, to, to, with the previous presidents, when, uh, for example, the already mentioned Kuchma is really believed to at least be tolerant toward killing of a famous uh, uh, investigative journalism, Georgi Gangadze. Uh, no, we we don't. We still happily don't have any any facts about uh, Zelensky trying to kill. Uh, any of uh, of journalists. <laughs> so if if measuring the situation by the these standards of the Stone Age, yes, Zelensky is still better. But uh, uh, inter he's mm, we see, we see more and more Zelensky's attempts to and Zelensky's office, Zelensky's teams attempts to control the media, 
uh, and what what I already mentioned, uh, the methods they uh, they use becoming more and more dirty and less and less ethical. I, I, I will quote myself. Um, a much bigger pressure is exerted on investigative journalists. It, it, it features wiretapping aimed at discrediting and character assassination, as well as as well as blackmailing by the perspective of forced drafting into the army. So. Of course, these things are in any way should be shouldn't be toler tolerated, uh, and it's not a it's not about uh, the the it's not about the the Ukraine, so to say, the uh, the Ukrainian media system we we all dream about and want to have. There is a question: uh, How would you describe? Thank you, Bina, for the question. How would you describe the Western media's coverage of two accusations of corruption that led to the reshuffling of Volodymyr Zelensky government? In general, how would you describe Western coverage of the Ukraine war? Uh, I'd say uh, the the easy and uh, very very short answer is corruption is here, and the situation doesn't seem. Um, reassuring uh, that was and that I as I said really and and enraged people really enraged because uh, as I've mentioned oh uh, you we have we 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 have now uh, one fifth of Ukrainian territories being occupied uh, Ukrainian each and every region of Ukraine is being shelled we have economic breakdown of uh, lo losses of life infrastructure damage you name it and day and night <laughs> there are investigations show proving that uh, actually the people in power are making good back on that of course this this make many people just you see we have this like very very People are, are really thinking, are hesitant. Should they actually uh, prote actually protest over this uh, over this situation, or should they refrain and let let the the uh, current current government rule because of the war? So in a sense, uh, regarding the the situation with corruption, <laughs> uh, the the. Uh, um, Martial law is a, you know, the, the means of kind of blackmailing the public, you know, coercing them to actually kind of stay calm and do what the big brother say, you know. Uh, how would you describe some coverage of the Ukraine war? It, the the main fact, the main achievement, in is that this coverage takes place. So. Uh, of course, um, uh, the many um, overall, uh, it's a huge improvement in terms of that. For the first time, many media try to tell this story no, not not without, so to say, the Russian lens. Uh, I we really we as Ukrainians really see that many. Inhabitants and public figures and and rank and type people really start seeing Ukraine as something separate from Russia, and so it's something in its own right. And one of the one and really this good coverage of West by the Western media is really like to be to be thankful for that. Okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So overall. Especially compared to the to the previous times, right now it's a, it's a, it's really good. What bothers many, uh, what worries many many Ukrainians is that actually the majority world, the global South, is in no way impressed by the Western media to telling about this. Uh, but it's 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 another story. Uh, thank you, Maki Shara. I'm, 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 uh, I'm really sorry if I, if I misspelled your name. Are there any topics that are difficult to report on during wartime? Yes, corruption, uh, uh, 
some some topics are morally ethic ethically demanding. Uh, some some topics are uh, technically demanding. Um, for example, uh, um, reporting on missing people, on uh, people being uh, who are uh, who are captured uh, by by. Uh, Mm, uh, on on the military on the on the soldiers who are who are in the Russian captivity, uh, the way they are treated, the the perspectives of swap uh, swaps of occupied territories, uh, which I mentioned about the 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 um, uh, the relatives of those who lost their loved ones. So yeah, yeah. Uh, overall, war is about blood. Uh, cynicism, um, violence—you uh, know—it's—it's—it's it's, it's really exhausting to 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 tell these stories. Really exhausting. Mm, so, actually, during time, most of the topics are difficult because if you if you present any story like a in a bravado way way, you could be like you could be um, perceived suspicious suspiciously ah. Maybe you are just a pro uh, government propagandist, you know. Uh, if you if you tell the story in a gloomy way, some people might say, "Oh, you you know, you try to kind of um, add the burden, you know, make it even heavier for the people." So it's it's always very delicate delicate um, balance. Uh, I watched the documentary and learned that it was challenging to cover the grief and anxiety of Ukraine women whose husbands or boyfriends became soldiers and were killed or went missing. And such a process could undermine morale and the discussion. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it is just one of the many, 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 uh, many troubles uh, uh, Ukrainian media now face. Because you see, but uh, again, what I will conclude uh, uh, with. Comparing comparing with the start of the invasion, when the situation was perceived like black and white, okay, we have the enemy, everyone knows who who the enemy enemy is, we are strong and united, we are uh, we have resolve and uh, resilience to fight it. Period. Right now, the situation doesn't seem that promising, that obvious. Uh, many males are fleeing the war. Uh, avoiding conscription, uh, f uh, fleeing the country. Uh, again, corruption is uh, really, really frustrating. So, yeah, that, that is why many, many people really, really searching for either searching for some other answers or uh, what, is, what, what we see one more trend is this nihilism and distancing from the news at all. So many people just uh, say that, okay, I don't trust anyone anymore. Uh, everyone is lying. The war is a, the, is a just a big business of big guys, and uh, we are to, we, at our uh, like uh, simple people's cost. So I don't trust anyone. The, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, uh, consume uh, news at all. And I believe it's really bad. It's really bad because. Um, Socially and politically, the, the, those people could be like lost.